Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Vandy. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey guys. It is Monday, February 17th, which means it is time for braid school. So today I had a completely different video planned for you guys, but I was reading over comments over the weekend and I was inspired to do this video instead because a lot of you have expressed that you need a little bit more fine tuning on some of the techniques I've been sharing. So I came up with the idea to drop you guys five tips to help you fine tune your braid game. These are basically the most frequently asked questions. Um, so I wanted to really just put everything into a video uh, to kind of address them all at once. So if you're interested in figuring out what it is you're doing wrong, make sure you stay tuned. Before we get started, let us first welcome back Sister Sheila back to the show. She's been MIA for a little bit, but she is back today to help us demonstrate these tips for you guys. For those of you who don't know who Sheila is, she is an awesome practice mannequin. And if you want to get one of your own, I will leave that link in the description box below. The first tip we're going to discuss is fine tuning your tucking game. Properly tucking the natural hair inside the braid is what really makes braids the one of the best protective styles out there. Tucking can be kind of challenging when you're doing it on yourself, but if you're a braider or just braiding someone else's hair, it's definitely beneficial to work on leveling this up to make sure that your client has long lasting braids. And one way to level up your game for sure is to practice this method without using any products. So you guys know that I typically will use Shine and Jam to kind of help with the process. But in this case, we're doing the no product challenge. You do not want to use any products when you're practicing. Because guess what? If you can do it without products, you can, you can only imagine how much easier the process will be when you start using products to do this method. Now you're not always guaranteed to get all of the hair tucked in there. You would basically need a lot more synthetic hair to really get it all tucked in there. But the name of the game is to tuck as much as you can.
So now I've reached the end of this braid and I've braided down as far as I can go. However, if I let this particular braid go because the ends aren't as tapered as I'd like them to be, it's gonna start to unravel. So let's get into sealing those ends properly. Typically, if the braid is tapered enough and long enough, you can braid it all the way down and it will not unravel. Um, the smaller the tapered end, the better it will hold. But in this case, it is a little bit thicker towards the bottom and I know that when I let it go, it's going to unravel. So if you come across a janky little braid that don't wanna act right, don't be afraid to dot it with a little bit of nail glue or super glue to make sure it doesn't unravel on your client. After adding the glue, I always clip it in place until the glue dries completely and then trim the ends if I need to. So here we are in the process so far with this particular braid. We've tucked it in, in as much as we can. You'll notice that when I flip it over, you can still see the black showing a little bit, but that's just an indication that the hair has been tucked in underneath the braid. Again, like we said, we can't tuck in all of the little tiny hairs, but we can do it as best as we can. But as you can see, we can't trim off every single little hair. We'd be here all day. So what we're gonna do is take this one step further and dip the hair in hot boiling water to help manipulate the synthetic hairs down so that they lay flatter. Which leads me into noticing a mistake a lot of people make is that the water isn't hot enough. So back in the day before we had electric kettles, we used to boil the water on the stove and just hope for the best girl. But now we have electric kettles at our disposal. This is the one that I've been using for so many years. It is a rival version, 1.7 liter. Um, it is the perfect amount of water for what you need to do. I don't think they make this model anymore, but they do have an updated model, which I'll leave a link for in the description box below, along with other comparable devices that will get the job done for you. Um, and this one is a cordless one, so basically it just has a base at the bottom, and then you just hit the lever and you wait for the water to boil at the top there. Um, mine usually takes about five minutes to do so, so timing is everything. I make sure I turn it on before I get ready to, to dip and go. But one mistake that I notice is that People are dipping the ends, but you're not getting the result that you're looking for because you're not letting the water get hot enough. That water needs to be boiling. Once it's at a rolling boil, you need to move quickly and go straight from that kettle to dipping your client's ends. Because the hotter it is, the better it's going to manipulate those little hairs and lay them down as flat as possible. Now, most folks will actually dip the hair directly into the kettle, but that's not my preference. I prefer to transfer it to one of these pitchers. This is one from the Dollar Tree. Um, I prefer it this way because the vessel is deeper. You can fit more hair into it, and I have better grip on the pitcher itself. It will reduce the uh, instance of any mistakes or spillage or any of that stuff because hot water's no joke y'all it'll burn you so now i'm just gonna dip the braid into the hot water you don't need to leave it in there very long maybe three seconds tops and then i always go underneath the braid with a towel use as many towels as you need to or thick enough towels as you need to so it doesn't burn your hands or your client and i'm going to lightly dap the hair out and squeeze it i'm not going to pull on it I'm just going to squeeze the water out what that's going to do is it's going to form the synthetic hair into where you want it to go and it's going to create kind of a cast around the natural hair as well now you can leave the braid as it is how it is right now or you can take it one step further and set the hair with either a foam or a mousse and Whichever one you pick is totally up to you. Um, foams like this one here by Tropical Roots or Lotta Body, um, they all work just great. I don't prefer to use the foams as much. It really just depends on the type of hair you're working with. My preference is this mousse right here because the drying time is a lot less. 
when you're using a foam it kind of saturates the hair a little bit more when you're using the mousse it's more sitting on top of it and kind of like creating more of a cast on top of the braid so my preference is the mousse i will link it in the description box below if you want to give it a shot but this is my favorite one and also do your mousse after you dip the water think about it guys don't put your mousse on first because when you put it on first and then you dip it in the water, you're boiling the mousse off. So you're losing all of your products. So make sure you're doing it after you boil. Finally, moving right into our last tip, let's talk about how to trim those ends. So there's different ways you can do this. Keep in mind in this demonstration, we use glue to seal the bottom of the braid. But let's pretend for a moment that you didn't use glue. Use scissors, you wanna make sure you understand how you want this cut. If you cut it straight across, there is a potential for that braid to become unraveled and then you're gonna end up with a whole mess. Or if you cut it at an angle, kind of like you're doing a tapered down, it can kind of get to look, start to look a little choppy if you're doing more than one braid at a time. So my personal preference is to forego the scissors and go in with a straight razor or a razor comb just to keep with the aesthetic of the look and to keep that tapered look look more effortless. And since this particular braid is glued at the tip, I can even make it a little bit shorter and still keep the tapered look. that's it for the video you guys i hope these tips were helpful um i was just inspired by a lot of the comments that i was reviewing over the weekend um by the way you guys are so positive and so motivating i am just so happy and grateful that you guys found me and i found you um because we all need each other i want everyone especially those of you who have been answering questions for me you guys are the mvps i appreciate that like with the utmost respect it is so helpful to the rest of the community and my ultimate goal with this series is so that we can all be a support to each other especially those of us who really want to take this business seriously so thank you guys so much for following along and supporting this channel don't forget to hit that like button make sure you share it with those you think it will be helpful to and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss another upload so again thanks so much for joining you guys and I I will catch you in the next video. Bye.